Hey everyone, it is Monday, December 13th, and I'm here to open days 12 and 13 of Advent Tiny Present Season. I just didn't feel like recording yesterday. I had so much to do. Actually, you can see right there, I've been doing my wedding thank you cards. So let's first do our Devere yarns, and we'll just do 12, which is here, and 13, which is here right now, and then we'll go into the Forbidden Fiber Co. So first we have, oh, it's like a yellow. It is called Citron. Yeah, it's a little bit of a greeny, greeny yellow. It's showing up a little buttery on camera, but it's more, it's more kind of a, like a key lime. It's like a key lime pie, like a real key lime pie. So that's Citron for day 12. And day 13 is, oops, day 13. Ooh, that's nice, is cru oops, crushed berries. And yeah, that's showing up pretty well on camera. So there you go. That is my, oops, 12th, 12th and 13th. This isn't going well, 12th and 13th. And now let's look at Forbidden Fiber Co, which, there we go. So 12 is a pattern and a floss. So I obviously can show you the floss, but not the pattern. And the floss is, ooh, wassail. We actually in Columbus, Mississippi call this wassail because we have a a town event called Waffle Fest, which people where where businesses downtown open up and make different forms of wassail or wassail, and the town comes out and walks around and drinks wassail and votes. So that is day twelve for Forbidden Fiber Co, which is wassail or wassail, and day thirteen is. It's not heavy. It's actually quite light. I'm gonna have to pause you to open this though. One second. All right, I got it out of the packaging, the bag. Ooh, it's a snack. Auntie M's Sweet Treats. Stitching is hard work. Enjoy taking a break with this yummy petite four flavored popcorn made by local business. Auntie M's Sweet Treats, nothing completes a ball like these delicious tiny cakes. So I will munch on those probably throughout the day and tomorrow and report back. So those are our, oh, and let me check out this pattern and see what we have now. It looks like we are starting to take shape. We have the thing that I said uh, uh, like last week was a person is a deer. We have a deer and a rabbit happening. We have perhaps a hedgehog or a Yule log with candles and a squirrel and definitely a building. So I think that I may, I had been planning on picking this up tomorrow when we get our next one. Yeah, I probably will. So my plan is to start stitching this again tomorrow, which is Tuesday, when I have more things on there and I won't get so lost with the counting. So I will show that on my Friday floss tube, whatever I've gotten done on that. But that's it for today. Here are my day 12 and day 13 Advent Tiny Presents. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey everybody, it is, goodness, Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday, December 14th. I was gonna say January. I don't know when we are. And we are opening up our 14th little window here in my Devere Yarns Silk Floss Advent Box. And we'll see, ooh, this looks like a natural color. It's not white. It is called Eggshell. Yeah, it's a little, it's definitely beigeier. It's like not like a white egg and it's not quite as brown as a brown egg. So it's called Eggshell. So that is Day 14 in the Devere Yarns Advent Calendar. 
And then day 14 in the Forbidden Fiber Co. advent calendar is a pattern and a floss. So let me get that floss out. Ooh, this one looks fancy. Look how fancy. Called Yule. Okay, let's talk about how interesting her flosses are. And I think it comes from the fact that she is originally a yarn dyer for knitting and they do things like speckling, which floss dyers don't usually do. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to pause you and take a look at the pattern and see if, uh, see what else we can see. So hold on one second. So in the pattern, this color is, looks like it's around the border. It's like bordering the border. It's enclosing the border. Um, and I think that'll be really amazing. So here is our day 14 advent slash tiny present opening. And we get Yule and eggshell. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Actually, I'll see you later. Hey everybody. My name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thanks for joining me today on this Tuesday for a Flossmas, I don't know, episode whatever. It's the 14th of December. <laughs> um, I, you're getting me like this today. I have been just running around all day. I had, just, I just have had so much to do. I'm leaving on Friday to go visit my family for the holidays. And there's just so much that I have to do before I can go. So I've just been doing that. And you're getting me with a headband and a t-shirt. This is my stomp t-shirt. I saw stomp for like, I think my mom took me for like my 18th birthday or something. So this is a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, you're getting me like this today. And I was actually just going to film you in front of my storage unit. I'm like, no, let me just sit down and just do it. Do it right. Anywho. You saw what we got in the, what we what I got in my advent calendars today, and I didn't bring them in because I wasn't planning on filming yet. But we're gonna eat dinner soon, anyway. Lots of rambling. So what I'm gonna sh what we're gonna do today is we're you're going to make we're gonna make a pom pom gnome together, pom pom gnome together. And this is not like a tutorial. This is a I want to make a pom pom gnome, and I've never done it before, so I thought I'd bring you along with me. So. Um, it's going to be pretty lightly edited, I think. And yeah, so we're going to do that. I did get some kind of amazing happy mail, but I will show you that for Friday's video. And in fact, I'm going to film Friday's video on Thursday just because I have, well, because I'm leaving on Friday. So I'm going to film Friday's video on Thursday, but it's going to go up on Friday and I'll show you some amazing happy mail. And I'm planning on filming while I'm away. Everyone has Wi-Fi. But I do have a lot of work to do. I have to prep for next semester and I'll be with family. So I don't know how long they will be. And I don't know like what kind of content they'll have. I am planning on taking my advent calendars with me. And so I'll open them, you know, at their appointed time. But yeah, so let me take you over to my work area and make a pom-pom gnome. And I'll see you, you know, when it's done. Thanks for joining me for my craft along. I This is not a tutorial. I have never made a pom-pom gnome before. So this is just kind of an experiment and you're going to come along with me. I just wanted to make some pom-pom gnomes. I've made the hat before and I've made the pom-pom before. So now I'm just going to try and, you know, put them together. These are the materials I'm going to use. I have two different colors of yarn. This green yarn is for the hat. He's going to be like a woodland gnome. And this white is for the pom-pom head beard. I have a pom-pom maker. I have rings cut off of toilet paper rolls. And ever since the toilet paper shortage, we've been getting our toilet paper delivered. So we go to who gives a crap. <laughs> so we always get a box in big letters that says who gives a crap. But the, they have the best rolls. These are really solid rolls. So if you do crafts with toilet paper rolls with your kids or with whomever, I highly recommend <laughs> who gives a crap toilet paper rolls. I have two of them. I don't know that I'm going to make two. These are cut at about a half an inch, a little over half an inch. You don't want more than an inch. I would say between a half and three quarters of an inch is what you want. I have beads. I have three different beads here, wooden beads. And these are just the wooden craft beads from Michael's. And they come in all different sizes and there are three colors. I think this a pound was $20. So I've been using them for just about everything. I have three of them. I think I'm going to use a brown one and a pink one. I think that the brown one would look really nice with the white. Pom-pom maker. I don't know if I said that. 
glue gun scissors. That's what I plan on using to make these. Oh, and a wooden spool because I have a ton of wooden spools and I thought that this green wooden spool as a body would be really cute and then it will sit, stand up. But you could just hang them from like a garland or whatever. Now I did a tutorial for how to make these tiny hats, which I'll put up here, I think. And I also made a video of how to make pom-poms in my Christmas pom-pom wreath video, which I will also put up here. So I am not, I mean, I'm just going to kind of do it and talk you through it as I do it, but not really go overboard with the explaining. But first we need to start with the hat. And for the hat, you need to not have everything stick to you. My hands are so dry. I've been doing thank you cards, wedding thank you cards all day. And so I've just been touching paper all day. So my hands are just so dry. And so pom-poms. Now I kind of want to, I'm not pom-poms, hats. I kind of want to stick with the green, mostly green. So I'm going to pull out the green ones. And this is just yarn that I got. I'm sure I got it on clearance at Michael's or Joanne's at some point. Same with the white yarn. I just kind of pick stuff up on clearance. This is probably too long for what I need, so I'm gonna cut them in half. And sometimes I'll fast forward things and sometimes I will do things in real time and sometimes I will forget that you're on, I'm on camera. Ooh, look how staticky, look how staticky. <laughs> Did I say you need a good thing of scissors? You need a good thing of scissors too. In half, cut them off. These were cut, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that I actually did a, an enormous yarn hat last year. And that's why these are already kind of pre-cut. So I'm just using, like I said, I'm just using stuff that I have. I'm not going to go out and buy anything new for this. That might be enough. Um, I think I'm going to use the, oh, and this like isn't perfect. You don't have to be perfect. This is going to be covered in yarn. I'm going to use the thicker one though. And all you do is you just double it up and do a little, a little loop like that. And you want to do that all the way around. You want them packed pretty closely. And you can of course use any yarn that you have or that you want to use. Um, it doesn't have to be anything special. You can make him Christmassy or you can make him um, you know, a Hanukkah gnome in blue and white, or, um, you know, a Yule gnome. This, this feels like a Yule gnome. He's kind of woodsy or not a holiday gnome at all, because not all gnomes don't have to be just holiday. I don't know about you, but I'm a child of the eighties. I was a child in the eighties. I was, um, in elementary school in the eighties and I used to love the cartoon David the gnome it didn't come on very much, but man, whenever David the Gnome came on, it was such a little treat to watch David the Gnome and he would like ride his fox and it was awesome. I love David the Gnome. And my husband loves gnomes. He's got a thing for gnomes. He wrote a, he wrote a book, a novel with a gnome as the main character. And ever, whenever we play Dungeons and Dragons or when we used to play Dungeons and Dragons, he was a gnome, a gnome character. He really likes, he really likes gnomes. So we have gnomes all over house, like garden gnomes <laughs> all over the house. Although this may be a gonk. I think it's called a gonk. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in if I've gotten it wrong. But apparently gnomes have eyes and gonks don't have eyes. And this creature, person, this person will not have eyes. He will just have a little, a little nose. But I've lost my look and my, my nose. <laughs> I don't know where my nose went. A little brown nose. I'll have to get another little brown nose. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just get another one out of the bag. It'll turn up. They always do. Speaking of which, when I was, when I lived in Iowa, um, my partner at the time had a, has, had a son. Well, he has a son. Um, and the son would come and visit us and, you know, for holidays and stuff like that. And I got him hungry, hungry hippos for Christmas one year, because that was one of my favorite games as a kid. And so hungry, hungry, hungry hippos, but the, 
the quality of the this is an aside the quality of the toy went downhill since the 80s and all the marbles were plastic so you know i think he was probably like six at the time and obviously <laughs> the marbles disappeared immediately like <laughs> within 20 minutes 80 percent of the marbles were gone and, um, man, I was finding marbles for years all over the house. And we literally replaced the floor, like brand new floor. And I was still finding hungry, hungry hippos marbles on the floor, which is ridiculous. All right. It looks like I need a couple more. So I'm going to cut a couple more. Um, but anyway, I will, the, the moral of the story is that that little brown nose will uh, turn up at some point. Whether I sweep it up or I look on the floor and pick it up or it turns up up here, it'll turn up. You just want to fill it up really well so there are no gaps. And then you take this and you turn it all inside out. Make it nice and stuffed inside the loop. And then you tie the top, cut a little pom, cut your little pom pom, and you're good to go. There has, um, so there is lawn work happening across the street, like right there. That lawn work has been happening literally for f three or four hours. Like, there's no grass, it's the winter. They have been over there with heavy machinery for three or four hours. It has been really annoying. Now you could stop here. Well, no, you want to trim it. We're going to trim it. And then you could stop there and just have like cute little hats, which I actually just saw a video on Instagram from Apricot Polka Dot making cute little pom-pom cute little pom-pom winter hats and I'm like oh I did that last year I am ahead of the curve look at me all right so you have a little a little pom little pom-pom hat there which I think is cute clean this up and now we need a head and this is a pom-pom maker I'm assuming it's a clover pom-pom maker I have some tea my voice is really, I'm all feeling a little, it's a little dry right now. So a little Earl Grey. So this is a pom-pom maker, but you can just use like a cardboard or something like that. This is the head and beard. So he's going to have a white beard because honestly, I have a ton of white. <laughs> I want to use it. So he's going to have a white beard, but you could use any color. I was thinking this one would make a nice beard as well. Like a nice non-white beard. I thought that would be cute. He can have a salt and pepper beard. Any number of options. This one, you could have a little speckled beard. And like I said, I showed you how to make pom-poms in all different ways in my pom-pom Christmas wreath video. So I'm just gonna make them <laughs> with the yarn I have. The thing I like about this yarn too, which you'll see, I think, once we cut it up is that it unravels really nicely it like it unplies itself really nicely and it makes i think will make for a really nice pom-pom I'm, I'm at a shot and essentially you just wrap it around and around and around until it's full so you can see there's still a gap there. You want this to be full. And I might just kind of do this and cut it out and <laughs> show you what it looks like at the end. You do this side, you cut it, you close it. And then you do this side, you cut it off, close it. And it looks like this on both sides. And I'll show you that when we get there. So here, this one is fairly full. And when you cut it, the nice thing about the pom-pom makers is that when you cut it, it kind of stays nice. And I like that. So I'm going to do this side and then I'll come back. I think that's probably full enough. Cut that. And then we have a nice full pom-pom maker. 
<sighs> I do, however, need my nose <laughs> for this next part. So I'm just gonna get a new one. And of course, I just saw it right here. <laughs> Which you probably knew it was there the whole time because you can see it. Anywho, <laughs> now we have two noses, but we only want one nose. All right, done with the yarn. Now what you do is you cut, oh, you need a piece of string to tie it. And it needs to be a pretty, so you, you're gonna be tying it tight. So it needs to be pretty, pretty strong. And you wanna come in. So you see that this one opens up this way. So you wanna cut along here from the opposite end. And you want good scissors for this. These are good Ginger, oh, Fiskars. These are good Fiskars that I got not too long ago. I think they were on like clearance or something at Michael's. And you go through and you cut your little pom-pom like that and then you take your yarn and you put it in between and you tie a knot and this is what is holding your pom-pom together so you want to make sure that it is good and tight and now, once it's good and tight, you open it up like that, pull it apart, and you have a pom-pom. Isn't it adorable? Now, this is going to be the front of the face because this string, my plan is to hold on the nose like that. So I want to trim this in such a way that that makes sense. <laughs> so I want like it to almost be kind of like mustachy right around it and then slightly shorter up here. Okay, so that makes me, that looks better to me. He's a little raggedy. He's a little raggedy gnome. <laughs> a little raggedy woods, woodland gnome. And then what I was thinking is I would feed this through. Let me get, oh, I don't have my, shoot, I don't have my needle. My needle's in the house. Um, I mentioned that this stuff, so I'm going to twist it. This stuff really frays nicely, but that means that it's difficult to get through things. So I'm going to use an awl. Sorry about my squeaky chair. I'm hopefully going to have my old office chair in here. There we go. So we have this. And I'm just, my plan is just to tie it. Right? I mean, that to me looks like <laughs> looks like a gnome gnome nose. And then I'm gonna put a little hat on him. So I think I need to make this up here flatter. And it's gonna be like that. I don't love I don't love how that worked, but it's good enough. It's good enough for my first try. That's what I'm saying. This is a crap with me, not a tutorial. <laughs> because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So I think I think at this point, I need to pop in my glue gun. So let me go get my glue gun. I use this piece of cork as my glue gun stand. I would love a, a nice glue gun at some point. But for now, for now, we use what we have. And I'm not going to buy new things for, for this. So I'm gonna cut this string off. The nice thing is that if this doesn't turn out good, I haven't actually lost anything and you guys get to see me fail miserably. <laughs> so that's fun. Ooh, that's better. That's better. And then the hat goes like that. Oh, God, that's adorable. Okay, good. I 
that is so cute. So this, you can, if, if I hadn't cut off the string here, you could just like hang this guy from like a garland or from like your tree. Oh my God, I can't handle. <laughs> Such a good idea. This was so cute. This was really cute. But I'm going to pop him on a, pop him on a spool. And then he'll sit. So that's the plan. So I've just kind of made a flat spot. And I didn't want to cut any of it out because I still want the, I didn't, I don't want to trim this. I want him to be very bushy on the bottom. And I want him to kind of bush over the, uh, the spool end. There we go. There's our little tiny gnome. That's adorable. Okay, good. I'm glad it worked. I'll show it to you close up uh, in my Flossmas video that I'm going to record in a couple hours. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there's my little, my little woodland pom-pom yarn gnome. So welcome back to the corner. I am so pleased with my tiny little gnome guy. How cute is he? Look how cute he is. We'll pull him back a little bit. I am so glad that I had this green little spool, but like I said, you don't have to put him on a spool. Um, you can, uh, or, or you could just put him on like a modern, like a thread spool. You don't have to have vintage spools, um, but he could hang really easily like on a garland or as an ornament. Look at his little tiny nose. I call noses schnoots. Look at his little schnoot. But he is um, just a little bit of hot glue and he's all kind of stuck together. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed making this little gnomey guy with me. And if you make gnomey guys, if you make some gnomes, what should, what should his name be? Well, maybe his name's, you know, David wore a red hat and, da and David the gnome. Tell me what you think his name should be. And here we have our gnome in his new home. And I think he looks nice with his little friend there. Some of you have asked about how my dog's doing and he's doing pretty well. So... Um, I actually got some sleep last night and woke up at a normal time for the first time since last week. So that's good. I will see you on Friday or you'll see me on Friday. Oh, I'm going to be restarting the Forbidden Fiber Co. Mystery Stitch Along, Bendy Stitchy Mystery Stitch Along tonight. That's my plan for tonight is to restart that. Well, not restart it, but like start stitching on it again now that I have more information because there's a lot of information now. And I can like really get going on it. And that makes me very happy. So that is my plan for tonight. I'm going to take it easy. I did, I don't know if I mentioned this, I did wedding thank you cards all morning. It took hours. I, was, I started working on them yesterday and wrote them all out. And then addressing them this morning took forever. It's been a lot today. It's been a lot this week. And it's going to be a lot this week. So I'm going to go eat dinner, stitch and I will see you on Friday. Please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.